Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthy Hong Kong. Today I wanted to give a quick update on our NMN trial. Our six month update has been a bit delayed as we wanted to get our blood markers done, but this has not been possible with the current lockdown in Hong Kong. We see the lockdown easing and we will get them done as soon as we can. Also because of the current COVID-19 situation, we ran out of NMN and we had two or three weeks when we were not taking any. I was sleepy again in the afternoon. Actually, my wife did notice that I was napping and I was definitely less energetic. We finally restarted with NMN two weeks ago. As we discussed in our last video about different formats of NMN, we were going to try NMN in lozenge format. So we are using the 250 milligram lozenge from ProHealth, which we take sublingually. So the lozenge itself is like this. Uh, they are little round tablets. The size is okay, the taste is fine, slightly lemony flavor, and you can put it under your tongue and allow it to be absorbed into your blood vessels. So as a recap, the sublingual method allows NMN to avoid being digested in the stomach and bypasses the liver, with the idea that it will be bioavailable in the bloodstream. What is our experience on lozenges so far? We did try taking powder form sublingually before. It was messy and not easy to put all the powder under your tongue. NMN is not cheap, so you don't want to be dropping it on the floor. The lozenges last longer than powder, for up to 20 minutes, which I'm hoping is giving the NMN more time to get into the bloodstream. So overall, we found that lozenges are a better choice for sublingual. I can happily put two of them in at once. My wife is fine to put four in one go, which is a total of one gram. Speaking of my wife taking one gram of NMN, she has tended to have side effects with headaches when she upped her dosage to 750 milligrams or above, but she feels fine with the lozenge format. So this is her first time up to one gram. I'm also on one gram and don't feel the need to nap anymore. So if you do see side effects when taking these supplements, it might be worth trying a reduced dosage and it's good to start with a low dosage and work up. A benefit that I found when taking NMN before was that my distance vision seemed to be clearer and I felt that this went away after not taking the supplement for a while. I noticed this when I'm looking at our bookshelf from the sofa, which is about 10 feet. When I was not taking NMN for a while, the characters of the titles of the books seemed not to be as clear as, clear as they used to be. So when we restarted, I wanted to be a bit more scientific about it. I've been using an online Snellen chart to test my eyesight. With this online tool, the characters can be generated randomly like this. So you can't use your memory. We measure from the recommended distance of 10 feet. And it does seem that my eyesight is better. I am now able to read about 50% of the 2015 line, which I could not do before. We are also measuring as many other parameters as we can, most of which are related to aging or health and are free or minimal cost tests that you can do yourself at home. We will make another video to talk about these soon. So next, resveratrol. First, a quick recap on some of the key points on resveratrol. As mentioned by Dr. Sinclair, you should get a minimum of 98% pure transresveratrol. Resveratrol has cis and trans forms. Transresveratrol is bioavailable, making it easy for your body to absorb and utilize. On the other hand, cis is not bioavailable, and in the tests that Dr. Sinclair has done, is not effective. Please be careful, as there are quite a few 100% resveratrols on the market which are quite cheap, but are not transresveratrol. We did get one before on Amazon, which claimed to be 100%. However, later we found that it did not mention transresveratrol anywhere on the package, and it was a dark brown color. So we switched to a different brand. We are now using this transresveratrol from ProHealth. It comes in a capsule form. One capsule is 500 milligrams. We are now taking two, which is one gram. On top of the 100% transresveratrol, they also contain 420 milligram blend of quercetin and mixed polyphenols, including piperin, a black pepper derivative which helps with absorption. One thing we want to mention is we normally open the capsule and mix the powder with olive oil, but the powder inside is a yellowy brown instead of white or off-white. We found someone had a question on this before on the ProHealth website and they answered that the original resveratrol powder is white, but the color of the final product is the result after mixing the ingredients that I mentioned above. 
We started on 500 milligrams, and one week ago we both upped the dosage to 1 gram for NMN and resveratrol. Before we restarted with NMN again, we took another biological age test and are now waiting for the results. Our plan is to take another age test after three months and to see if there is any change. So here is a list of supplements that we are taking for our three month test. As mentioned, we take one gram of NMN currently as a lozenge. If possible, we will stick to the same format in these three months so we can see more accurate results. One gram of resveratrol. As we are now taking 1 gram of NMN, we have also upped our TMG to 1 gram to ensure sufficient methyl group replenishment. Alpha lipoic acid, 600 milligrams as an antioxidant and to lower blood sugar among other benefits. Vitamin K2 D3 for immune system support and because we don't get out in the sun enough, especially with the current lockdown. Vitamin C, again for the immune system. Vitamin A for vision and also to support the immune system and then krill oil for EPA and DHA for our brain health. I also want to talk about a recent paper that was released in preprint on BioArchive. The study was about using the blood of young rats to rejuvenate older rats. The results from this paper were quite amazing, though it should be noted that this is a preprint before it has undergone peer review. So here is the study on BioArchive. The title is Reversing Age, Dual Species Measurement of epigenetic age with a single cock. Let's have a look at some excerpts from the report. The idea behind the study is it has been previously shown that young blood plasma has beneficial effects on various organs in mice. Since that time we have developed epigenetic clocks which are more accurate and precise in measuring biological age. With this study, what this study set out to see was did rejuvenation work at the epigenetic level and so truly make the animal younger. To study this, they worked out six epigenetic clocks for rats. It's interesting to note that two of the clocks also worked in humans, which is to say the same CPG markers in common genes were predictive of relative age for both rats and humans. We will look at the results in more detail later, but you can see here that they made improvements on a number of key markers. So what did they actually do in the test? They took blood serum from young rats and injected it into old ones. They did this in four injections over a period of eight days, then repeated this 95 days later. Here we see the results. The treatment more than half the epigenetic ages of blood heart and liver tissue, a less pronounced but statistically significant rejuvenation effect could be observed in the hypothalamus. The treatment was accompanied by progressive improvements in the functions of these organs and improved cognitive functions. Cellular senescence, which is not associated with epigenetic aging, was also considerably reduced in vital organs. One of the key summary items is that the results imply that aging is a system-wide function that can be reversed in a coordinated fashion rather than something that would need to be done to each individual organ. Preliminary results, and as I mentioned, not peer-reviewed yet. Also, it should not be forgotten that this is a rat study, not a human one. And the supply of young human blood serum is limited and there will be a host of ethical considerations, but very exciting nonetheless. And finally, one resource that we thought was really useful that we wanted to share was the FAQ on the official lifespanbook.com website. It lists common questions and support documents categorized into different areas like exercise, fasting, metformin, NMN, resveratrol. So for example, if you wanted to know how much NMN Dr. Sinclair is taking, we can find it here. What is the dosage of Dr. Dr. Sinclair's NMN? And it says David takes 750 milligrams to 1 gram of NMN daily, usually with breakfast. So it's a very useful resource and definitely worth browsing. It is linked to in the description. I would like to thank everyone for watching. We will be releasing new updates soon, so please do subscribe. I wish you all well and I will speak to you soon.